Today, we're gonna to talk about how to successfully deal with feeling overwhelmed. And a lot of people think that if I'm overwhelmed, I need to overcome that feeling. I need to use strength or willpower or discipline to just get over it. And if I'm mentally stronger, I can conquer the feeling of being overwhelmed. As it turns out, you don't need to do that. And in fact, there's actually a really interesting way to unplug the feeling or disarm it or kind of make it go away on its own. In order to understand how to do that, we have to understand how the mind feels overwhelmed in the first place. And it may not be quite what you think. So the feeling of being overwhelmed comes from a relationship between passive challenges and active challenges. Now, what does that mean? So a passive challenge is something that you were challenged with that you did not choose. So when life throws you difficulties, those are passive challenges. And oftentimes, this is what makes us feel overwhelmed because there are too many things that are outside of our control. And when life is sending us a bunch of stuff that are outside of our control, we can't fix them. If we can't fix them, we feel overwhelmed. There's another kind of challenge though, which is something called an active challenge. And an active challenge is a challenge that you choose to take. So if you set a goal for yourself and you decide to move towards it, that's an active challenge. Is it difficult? Yes, but you are choosing the difficulty. Now here's the really key thing. What a lot of people think is that being overwhelmed is the sum of the challenges that you face. If I am feeling more challenged or there are more things that I'm dealing with, I must feel overwhelmed. That is actually incorrect. Your mind feels overwhelmed when your passive challenges outweigh your active challenges. So another way to kind of think about that is when you are dealing with more things that you chose not to deal with as opposed to the things that you chose to deal with, this is when you feel overwhelmed. It's not the total sum of challenge, it's are you dealing with more things that you chose to deal with or things that you didn't choose to deal with? I'd like to take a moment to thank today's sponsor, Milanote. As a psychiatrist, it's incredibly important for me to stay organized, not only for my patients, but also for things like YouTube videos. And that's where Milanote comes in. Milanote is an easy to use tool that helps me organize my ideas and channel my creativity using visual boards. And what I love about Milanote is that it allows me to collect information, like clip images from the internet, as well as plan tasks in the exact same place, and even take notes. It's also really cool that Milanote has over 100 built-in templates that make it easy for me to create resources for my patients or storyboard my next YouTube video. It's also really cool that Milanote exists everywhere that I want it to be. There's a desktop app for it, there's a mobile app for it, so even when I'm browsing my phone, if I see something really interesting, I can clip it and stick it right into Milanote. And the best part is that Milanote is free with no time limit. So if you're ready to take your organization and creativity to the next level, check out the link in the description below and get started with your next creative project with Milanote today. Now this can feel, seem kind of confusing because it sort of feels like, okay, well, if life is throwing me lots of stuff, I can't choose to take on other challenges. Like I'm not gonna take on other problems if I can't deal with the problems that I have already which is exactly the problem. When we do that, when we give up our active challenges, then the ratio of passive challenges to active challenges actually goes up. We have way more passive challenges because we're cutting out things that we want. And this actually reinforces the feeling of overwhelmed and this is how we end up getting stuck. And so we sort of discovered that the solution to this may seem completely counterintuitive, which is to actually increase the number of active challenges in your life. And if you're skeptical of that, it makes perfect sense because it is counterintuitive, but there's actually really good data to back this up. And we kind of discovered this principle in the most bizarre place, which is with eating disorders. And you may start to wonder, okay, what does that have to do with anything that we're talking about? So clinicians made a really interesting observation that the more out of control someone's life is, the more disordered their eating becomes. So if you take someone with an eating disorder and you hospitalize them against their will and you sort of, let's say they get hospitalized for an addiction problem, what you'll sort of find is that now that I can't control my usage, my eating disorders actually get worse. Another situation is that when people with eating disorders get into a emotionally neglectful situation or their parents are very controlling, their disordered eating gets worse. 
And as we worked with these people, what we sort of discovered is as they lose control in other parts of their life, what they do to avoid feeling overwhelmed is to start to really control their eating. So they make that challenge of eating so great that it gives them a sense of control in life and it sort of protects against the feeling of being overwhelmed. And so we kind of discovered something really interesting. And this also kind of explains why disordered eating is so bad. The more out of control my life becomes, the more difficult the challenge that I put on myself. The more I'm going to eat like two leaves of lettuce and I'm going to eat very few calories and I'm going to torture myself. But even though the challenge becomes harder and harder and harder, it gives me a sense of control and counteracts the feeling of overwhelmed. And it's not only in eating disorders that we've sort of discovered this. We kind of have applied this to treatments for depression. So there's a treatment for depression called behavioral activation. And the way that this works is kind of like, okay, I'm depressed because there are all these things that I can't control, right? People don't like me. I don't have a job. I don't have a romantic partner. I have no prospects in life. And so we kind of feel like, okay, I can't fix all these problems, so I'm depressed. And so what clinicians actually figured out is we can do something called behavioral activation, which is we have to get this person to challenge themselves in any t tiny minor way. And if they can start to activate their behavior and challenge themselves in some way, I'm going to get up. I'm going to clean the dishes, I'm going to do my laundry, that somehow that helps them gain control of their life and actually causes the depression to go into remission. And this doesn't make any cognitive sense, right? Let's like acknowledge that for a second. Because if you're in the mind of that depressed person and you're thinking to yourself, doing the dishes doesn't make a difference because I'm alone, I don't have a job, or I'm in a dead-end job. Doing the dishes doesn't actually fix those problems. And so that's the reason that we don't do the dishes in the first place. But what we sort of have figured out scientifically is that by doing the dishes, by fixing problems that are not the problems that overwhelm us, it actually makes us feel less overwhelmed. Now I'm taking control of, over my life. And this becomes really, really important because once I stop feeling overwhelmed, then I can start to tackle those other problems. And this is also something that we really have to tunnel down into for a second. Let's just play this tape through. There are things outside of my control. I don't have any control in life. Therefore, I feel overwhelmed. If I feel overwhelmed, how capable do you think I am at tackling those problems? Being overwhelmed in the first place hamstrings us because our mind is telling us all the time, you can't fix this. This is out of your control. This problem is too big. This problem is too big. This problem is too big. And so this is where being overwhelmed becomes kind of a self-fulfilling prophecy where once our passive challenges rise, and we start to feel overwhelmed, then we engage in avoidance behaviors and the cycle repeats itself. So interestingly enough, the answer to that problem is actually unplugging the feeling of being overwhelmed. And the way that we stop feeling overwhelmed is to actually increase our challenge in a completely unrelated area. And once we increase our challenges in a completely unrelated area, we increase those active challenges. As we increase those active challenges and we start to work on those things, our mindset changes. Now we feel confident in ourselves. We feel in control. And now those very same problems that used to feel overwhelming, now we have the confidence to deal with them. And so it sounds really bizarre and counterintuitive, but if you're feeling overwhelmed, you don't actually need to fix the problems that make you feel overwhelmed. Because oftentimes those problems are completely out of your control. What you actually need to do is pick a completely different set of problems, but you need to pick it. And as you start to work on those, you'll see a cognitive shift because literally the equation in your mind is if active challenges outweigh passive challenges, I feel in control. But if passive challenges outweigh active challenges, then I feel overwhelmed and I'm unable to take action. So you don't need to conquer the feeling of overwhelmed at all. You just need to disarm it or unplug it by paradoxically taking on different challenges.